If you're married, you probably have a story of how you met your spouse, don't you? Uh, I, I actually first met Janelle in 1990 at the KFC parking lot in Cassville. Did you know K, uh, Cassville had a KFC? Many of you don't remember that. Um, but she was from Washburn, and I was from Cassville. And I mean, everybody from Cassville, uh, all the guys knew who she was because she worked at Walmart at the service desk. And she's giving me an a- ugly look right now. It's not bad, I promise, okay? Just, <laughs> just slow your roll, okay? Um, but she worked at the service desk at Walmart, and, and uh, all of us guys knew who she was. And I personally thought she was out of my league, right? And guys are like that. We always assume the worst, but... Uh, I just knew that there was no way that I, I'd ever have a chance with her. And I had a friend who actually said, well, why don't you just ask her out? And I said, I, I, I can't. I don't even know her. And, and he, then he said something so profound. He said, you know, uh, how are you going to get to know her if you don't ask her out? Um, that's the purpose of dating, or as you uh, more seasoned adults like to say, courting, right? You take them courting. Uh, that's the process of getting to know the other person, learning about them, finding out their likes, their dislikes. I mean, before we ever went on a date, I had no clue what her pet peeve was. I, I had no clue what her favorite food is. I didn't know her to be a, whether she was a kind person, whether she was intelligent. I had no clue that she liked to tailgate people. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that she liked to speed. And she has road rage every 15 minutes. I didn't know that. And there's a lot that she didn't know about me. And if she did, she'd probably have never agreed to go out in the first place. But you can't discover these things about the other person unless you, no-brainer, spend time with them. you got to talk to them. you got to listen to them. you got to watch how they interact with other people. One of the the major factors for me with with Janelle was I, I like to... Uh, see her family. I, I wanted to know what kind of family she come from. That was, that was big for me. Um, and so that's what we do. That's the reason we date is to get to know the other person, to find out if we're compatible. Um, and we've been talking about this idea of being known, knowing God and God knowing us. And I, I've continued to use this word intimacy, Uh, talking about intimacy within the relationships. And I'm not talking about the sexual, on the sexual nature. Uh, I'm talking about the deep, intimate relationship that develops over time where you actually get to know who they are and you know all of their ins and outs, you know their pet peeves and their likes and their dislikes. And um, and it happens. It's just, it's it's so simple. I mean, it's, it's just common sense that the more time that you spend with the person, the better you know them. The deeper the relationship uh, can go. And so there's, I, I've been trying to use this connection between the intimacy with God and, and knowing God. And the only way that we can deepen our relationship with God, the only way that we can become more intimate with God is, is, is by spending time with Him. And that means that we spend time with Him in, in meditation or prayer or we spend time digesting his word, like reading the Bible. You know, it's, it's sad to think that there's so many qu- Christians in the world, they claim to actually know God, right? However, they, they have no clue what his word says. They've never cracked it open. They've never read it for themselves. But then if they're ever questioned, they, they will make the affirmation, yes, I know God. Uh, but they have no clue what... God really is like, and the reason is because they neglect the scriptures. And, and I, I'm kind of a rational person. I, I kind of like to think through the process of things. And I, why do Christians, why do they neglect God's word? And I think there's a couple. Of, I, I, mean, I think there's many reasons why people neglect God's word. Just a few that I, I can name off the top of my head is probably that uh, a lot of people see God's word as boring. I think that a lot of people see God's Word as tedious. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, don't want to read it in such a way that they can apply it to their life, and they see it as outdated. And sometimes people have a valid reason. They say it's difficult to comprehend, that some of the passages don't make any sense, and especially when you view those scriptures through the lens of our daily culture, 
right? Of course, things that were written 3,000 years ago aren't going to make sense if you try to interpret them through the lens of today. But the only way that you'll ever get to know God is to get to know Him better is to listen to Him. And the only way that God speaks to us today, or the main way, the, the main conduit by which God communicates to us today is through His Word. And when you neglect reading God's Word, you're not giving God an opportunity to speak to you. You're, you're cutting off all forms of conversation and communication. It's almost as if, you remember, I, I mean, we grew up in the 90s, in the late 80s and the 90s, and whenever you wanted to talk to somebody, you'd pick up the phone. You'd call them. I mean, you didn't have texting. And so a lot of that communication was done on the phone. And how crazy is it to think that you would go up to somebody and say, hey, would you like to begin dating, and then never communicate with them? You don't share your phone numbers, and you don't ever get together, and you don't ever talk. I mean, can you validly say, I'm in a relationship with this other person? You know, you can't neglect reading the Scriptures, because when you do, you're, you're just saying, I don't want God to speak to me. I don't want to hear from God. However... If you will commit yourself to a daily engagement with the Bible, I think you'd find that, that many of the objections that you have to reading the Bible are, no longer have any standing. Because I, I, I agree, there are portions of the Bible that are boring or tedious. Uh, sometimes they're difficult to interpret. Uh, and, and I mean, especially when you think about reading through the genealogies of the Bible, or you begin to read through the explanations of the dimensions of the temple and, and things like that, or the, the sacrifice system. Um, you, you read through that. I mean, it's super tedious. But those sections are there for a purpose. And, and they establish important connections that, that bring greater clarity to other portions of the Bible. And so if you'll read them and at least expose yourself to them and kind of hold on to them, say, I really don't understand what this is saying, but then later you might come to a passage of Scripture where you say, oh, I remember when that was talked about, and here's how that brings clarity to what they're saying here. And, and I believe if you really approach the Scriptures in earnest, you'll find that it, they are practical and they are applicable for everyday life. And, you know, it's not really that difficult to understand the Scriptures especially if you choose a translation that's easier to understand. Like you guys have probably noticed, I read and preach out of the New Living Translation. Not necessarily because I believe it's the absolute very best translation on the planet, but I think it's the best translation that I can find that I can actually understand. And, and I trust those that have interpreted it and that the editors of it. And so I think it most closely represents how we talk today without being a paraphrase or, or like the message. I, so that's the reason why I choose to read out of the New Living is because it just does a great job of, of taking God's Word and kind of exposing it to me. And, and, you know, there are passages of the Bible that I find difficult as well. But you know what happens? If you're a believer, if you're walking with, with Christ, you have the Holy Spirit residing within you. And when you come across difficult passages... What you're going to find is if you'll just, I mean, sincerely commit yourself and just say, God, I, I need you to clarify this. The Holy Spirit does something within you that it, it takes the Scriptures and it illuminates those and clarifies those things so that, so that you don't have to walk around being confused. But if you'll just take a sincere effort to engage the Creator of the universe through prayer or the reading of His Word, you know, that's all that you need to take your relationship to the next level. Your relationship status will move from acquaintances to best friends. If you'll just, those two things, just spend time in prayer and spend time reading God's Word. That's all that's needed to draw closer to the Lord, to develop that more intimate relationship. So if you want to follow along in, in your uh, bulletin, you know, take some notes here. The first thing that I see through... Uh, this whole study that we can find. We can grow intimate with God, and as we do, we learn more about Him. You know, human beings are really, really bad about making assumptions about people we know nothing about, don't we? Uh, 
Have you ever went to the mall and just sat on one of those benches and just people watched? I do. And, and, and I'm, in my brain, I'm already casting dispersions upon those people. I'm already classifying them. I'm already, I've already written their story in my mind. We, we draw assumptions about people we don't know. But then what happens is when we finally get a chance to meet that person, we get a chance to talk to them, we get a chance to listen to them, what we, what we discover is the, the, the conclusions that I've drew about that person uh, are completely false. I drew conclusions about somebody that I didn't know. And take that idea then and apply it to God. That situation can be applied when we begin to think about God as we draw near to Him and we talk to Him and listen to Him. We'll, we'll find that many of the assumptions that we've made about God are, are, are completely set aside once we actually get to know Him. Once we read His Word, when we begin to learn more about God, we, we, and, and we get to see His nature. And so as, as our relationship deepens, we, we begin to understand more about Him. We begin to see some of these essential qualities. And the qualities of God that we see, they are intrinsic and inherent to His being. And they're immutable. That's a big word, immutable. Immutable means that they never change, such, such as God's omnipotence. That means that He's all-powerful. Or God's omniscience. That means that He is all-knowing. He knows everything. Or we, we talk and learn about God's omnipresence, which is God is everywhere. And, and all times we talk about His eternality, which means that God exists outside of space and time. He has no beginning. He has no end. And then we can talk about His infinity, that, that He is not limited in terms of, of time or His power or His knowledge or His presence. When you draw near to the Lord, and your relationship with Him begins to deepen, you become more intimate with the Lord. You begin to see those things through His Word and through prayer. You, you, those things are, are just begin to, it's kind of like a, just a rose being unfolded. You can begin to see all these things about the Lord that you've never known. And another benefit about knowing God is that we can not only see His nature, but we can see His character as well. Uh, and when I say character, I'm talking about those moral and ethical qualities of, of God, you know, talking about the attributes that describe His actions, such as, you know, uh, God's love. We can see God has a deep selfless love for creation and humanity. We can see God's justice, how He's committed to fairness and righteousness and order. And we can see His mercy. You know, mercy is when... Punishment is due, but God relinquishes it. He has compassion and forgiveness to those who have done wrong. Or we can see God's faithfulness. We can see that He's always reliable, and He's always trustworthy to His promises. We can see His goodness, His inherent kindness. We can see His holiness. We can see His pure and sacred nature. And, but we can only see these things and begin to know them on a, on a greater level. When we draw close to Him, we have to commit to that deeper, more intimate relationship with the Lord. These things, all these things I said, you probably agree with them. And, and you probably nod along. But they don't come to life until you begin to actually say, God, I want to know you more. I, I want to know what, it's, what your love is like. I mean, I hear people all the time that have no clue who Jesus is that would say, God is love. Do, do you really understand what you're saying? Only when you, when you commit yourself to that intimate, close relationship with the Lord will you fully understand what love looks like, that selfless, giving love. And when you do that, you gain a better understanding of just who God is. You gain a better understanding of what type of God He is. And, and so number two that I see here is the benefits of the intimate relationship with God is you, I mean, you can invest in your relationship, and, and it will produce many, many benefits. In fact, as I began to create this particular point, I realized that the benefits to an intimate, loving, deep, committed, personal relationship with God, the benefits are just too much for me to list every single one. This isn't a comprehensive list at all. But what, what I've done here is I've tried to take some of the the, the, the ones that stood out to me and just kind of share them with you. 
And of all of the benefits, I think they're all impacted by number one. I think number one informs the rest of these benefits. And number one is trust. As you begin to develop and grow closer to the Lord, just like any relationship, you will learn to trust that person more. I mean, every relationship, I think trust is the most important element. You have to trust that person. If you don't trust that person, you're not going to be in a relationship for, with them for very long, are you? But trust begins small, and it develops over time, and it can be lost in the blink of an eye. But the more intimate we become with God, the greater our trust in Him becomes. And whenever that, the greater the trust that we have in Him, it will inform, and you'll see as I list these other ones, you'll see that it influences everything else from here. Psalm 910 says, Those who know your name trust in you. Do not abandon those who search for you. And so as as you learn uh, to be more intimate with the Lord, you'll learn that He can be trusted, and then that trust directly contributes to the size of the benefits that I'm going to list here. Like you develop a sense of purpose and meaning in your life. As you move deeper in your relationship with God, it will, it will be crystal clear about His purposes and His work in this world. You ever wonder why God has put you here? You ever wonder what God's purpose for your life is? You know why a lot of people struggle with that question? And it's so easy. Because they don't know God. They don't have an intimate relationship with Him. They, they're not on a first-name basis with Him. Because if they would commit to that intimate, close, personal relationship, going, going deep with the Lord, he'll, he'll reveal His purposes to them. And, and when that happens, you, you see your place in His divine plan. And, and, and you'll, you'll begin to realize the direction that He has set for your life. Uh, and this is a reason that we should strive for personal growth and, and pers- positive contributions to the world is as we begin to see what God has planned for us and His purposes for us. Jeremiah 29.11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Many people walk around through life with no hope. And and part of the problem is they don't realize that God does have a plan and a purpose, and they don't realize that because they don't spend any time with Him to allow Him to tell them that. It's just kind of a a no-brainer. Another positive benefit is the strength that you can derive from the Lord. A close relationship with God will provide you with strength and resilience during difficult times. And everybody in here, I don't care who you are, you will have times in your life where it will be difficult. You know, there will be times in your life when your back's against the wall, you have nowhere to turn, but as you grow deeper in your relationship, you'll learn that you can trust God for support. And so when times get dark, you don't have to sit back and worry, how am I going to make it through this? You're going to know that I'm going to derive my strength because I've learned that God can be trusted and through His Spirit, He will fill me with courage, stamina, and guidance. You see, uh, the secret sauce for Christians to to find strength in the midst of uh, uh, adversities is that we know that we're not alone. How can you know that you're not alone If you never spend any time with Him, don't allow Him to remind you, you're not alone. I love you. I've got a plan and a purpose for you. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So not only do we get strength, but we get security. We live with full confidence that God is with us. He's for us. He's on our side. He's working on our behalf, and He has our good at heart. Romans 8.31 says, What can we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? You know what? As you read through the Scriptures, and, and you're going through difficult times in your life, or you need, to, you, you need just assurance, assurance, God, I just need to know, are you with me? Will you walk with me? Are you going to be available to me? 
if you know God and, and you've spent time with Him, the Holy Spirit will remind you, if, if I'm for you, who can stand against you? And it provides not only security, but peace and serenity. I know there's been times in my life where I've thought that things were so chaotic and so out of control. I just needed to have peace in my life. I just wanted to feel serenity. But as, as I grew deeper in my relationship with the Lord, I, I've, I've seen His character be revealed, and, and I've seen His steadfast love. I, I've seen uh, how He cares for us and His people. And you know what that does? Whenever I see that He's steadfast and He cares for us, uh, anxiety just kind of seems to uh, subside away. I, I can feel that my stress level goes down and and all of a sudden, the things that I've been worrying about aren't worries any longer. Because God's using His Spirit to remind me, hey, be at peace. I care about you. I'm on your side. And so as you learn to trust Him, you're going to find that He can provide calmness in the midst of life's challenges and storms. Philippians 4, 7 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Now, full stop. What Paul has just written there, he could have summed it up by saying, be intimate with the Lord. Pray, tell God, thank Him. That's, that's that relationship. And then he says the results of that relationship, then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You see, that's what Paul's saying. Commit to spending time with him and grow intimate with him, get to know him better. The results are peace. Proverbs 1.33 says, All who listen to me will live in peace and safety, unafraid of harm. You know, the only way that you can listen to him is if you're, if you're giving him an opportunity to speak to him, him speak to you. And the last thing that I would say, the last benefit that I've noticed is that people who spend a lot of time with the Lord and they have a very deep, intimate relationship with the Lord, I see a lot of wisdom in those people. They live with wisdom. I mean, they have this divine guidance for their life. They, they, they can make uh, good decisions, and, and when there's difficult life choices, they always seem to make the right one. And it, I think it's directly con uh, attributed to their relationship with the Lord, how intimate they are with Him, how deep they've went with Him. James 1.5 actually says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. You can only ask if you're in communication with Him. I mean, I don't know how much more basic what I'm talking about this morning I can make it. You've got to give him opportunities to speak to you. And you've got to give him opportunities so that when he speaks, you can listen and respond. But I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there are some barriers that exist within us that prevent us from having an intimate relationship with God. And the first thing that comes to my mind is that we have guilt over our past sin. We walk around like defeated people because of things we've done in the past. And, and so we walk around with these feelings of guilt and, and shame. And, and what that simply does is that pushes us further and further away from the Lord because we feel unworthy of God's love. And, and, and we don't believe that we should receive any forgiveness whatsoever. We've convinced ourselves. We talk to ourselves and we say, hey, God what doesn't want anything to do with you. You're messed up. You're a failure. And so when we convince ourselves of those things, what we naturally do is we distance ourselves from God. And when we distance ourselves from God, it prevents any possibility of that deeper, more intimate relationship with God. And that's not anything unique to us today. It's been this way since day one. In Genesis 3, you remember Adam and Eve, they sinned, right? Commit the very first sin. They eat the forbidden fruit. Immediately after they eat that fruit, the Bible is talking about how God had walked with them. 
through the garden. I mean, that, you want to talk about an intimate relationship when God actually comes down and walks with you through the garden. But after they sin, it says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, it says they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and he said, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. We do that today. We recognize our sin and the shame and the guilt and all of that, and we hide from God. When you do that, you're not giving the Lord an opportunity to speak to you. You're, you're severing yourself from that intimate relationship. So I would recommend, acknowledge your, your mess-ups. Acknowledge your past. Seek forgiveness for those actions. That's an important first step in overcoming the barrier to intimacy with the Lord is just forget the past. Ask for forgiveness. So, we, I mean, those things that have happened in the past, but we also have to recognize that there's rebellion in our life for right this moment. We have times in, in, our, in our current situation where we are deliberately disobedient to the Lord. Anytime we give in to our sin nature, anytime that we ignore God's commands and we pursue our own desires, it drives a wedge between us and God. Psalm 24 says, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deep, deceitfully. You see that? Who, who can stand in God's presence? Only people that, that have dealt with their sin. If you're not willing to deal with your sin, you can't stand in the presence of the Lord. You can't develop a deeper, more intimate relationship with Him. It's only when you're willing to acknowledge your sinfulness and, 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 you, and, and then you repent of that sinfulness. It's only when you do those things, acknowledge and repent, that you can enjoy full fellowship with God once again. I, this is a key principle. You might want to write it down. And that is that purity paves the way to intimacy. Purity paves the way to intimacy. And if you're not consistently pursuing purity in your own life, holiness... I mean, acknowledging sin, repenting of sin, turning from sin, setting those things aside. If you're not constantly doing that, you're allowing impurity to reign in your life, to exist in your life. And impurity erodes our capacity to experience intimacy with the Lord. God wants nothing to do with unclean hands. James 4, 8 says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. He's saying, if you want to draw near to the Lord, you want to become more intimate, you want a deeper relationship with God, wash your hands first. That, what he's saying, he's not talking about literally going in with dial soap and scrub. He's saying, purify your heart, acknowledge your sin and repent of it, then step into the presence of the Lord. Uh, but I think probably, number three, the greatest barrier to intimacy with the Lord is just human pride. Um, and I think every sin at its root has pride at, at the center of it. Pastor John Stott wrote, and he said, um, Pride is more than the first of the deadly sins. It is the essence of all sin. And I agree with that. When you look at any sin, at the root of it is human pride. And it's deadly, but pride is deadly because it sees no use for God. It causes us to find things to replace God. And, and, and it, it ultimately, the idolatry of self, putting ourself on a plateau, on a pedestal, and, and thinking that, that we should be worshipped or self-worship. And you know what? What we see in the Scriptures, it says very clearly that God hates pride. Proverbs 16.5 says, The Lord detests the proud. They will surely be punished. So naturally, God will not draw near to those who harbor pride. And, and really, to be honest with you, who would want to be drawn near to a God that has already stated, I'm going to punish you if you have pride? You're not going to want to do that. So you're going to distance yourself from Him. But the antidote to pride, of course, is humility. 
And humility is when we fully understand our proper role and place in this universe. And so when you realize just exactly where you stand in this universe, it's much easier to put God in His proper place at that point. You can respond by showing reverence to Him and respect. And the position of humility is what? It's a position of submission. It's a position of getting on your knees and bowing before a holy God. When you do that, He welcomes you into His presence, and that's when you can begin to develop that deep, personal, intimate relationship with the Lord. And so over the past three weeks, you know, I've been walking through this whole known thing, and, and so hopefully over the past few weeks you've evaluated your own position, and you begin to think about uh, your own personal relationship with God. And, and maybe, hopefully, if you're honest with yourself, maybe you've determined that I'm not nearly as close to God as what I could be and what I should be. I need to make some changes in my life. I, I need to make some adjustments. I've, I've blown it in this area, or, or maybe I've neglected to spend time in God's Word, or, or I, I forget to pray as, like I should. You know, I, you're not alone. I'm, I'm not beating people up here. That's not my purpose. I, in fact, I'd say all of us, if we're honest, we, a little element of that, we can, we'd have to all affirm, right? Yeah, there's parts of my life that's preventing me from a deeper, more intimate relationship with the Lord. And, um, but I hope this morning that when, if, if you persist with that, what you're going to miss out on is finding someone that you can trust and you're going to miss out on on the strength that he can provide and the peace and the serenity and and the security and the wisdom and I mean you're going to miss out on all of those benefits a lot of times those benefits are exactly what you need in your life on that day at that moment but because you're stubborn or because you've allowed yourself to be distracted by the world You've neglected your personal intimacy with the Lord. And, and any semblance of trust or strength or peace, rather than being in that full capacity, it's maybe at 15% or 50%. When you could be enjoying the full power and the full strength and peace that God offers. It's like, it's, it's like a, a, a machine that's, that's not plugged in or... I've been buying some new tools around my house, you know, and I kind of dig those battery-powered tools. And, you know, if you try to take a, a big tool and plug a small battery into it, like if you've got a 20-volt drill and you try to plug in a 10-volt battery, that drill's not going to operate at full capacity. You've got to, you've got to use the proper things. You've got, to, you've got to plug into all the power that you can stand. And so I think that a lot of us, we squander away a, 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 lot of, a lot of opportunity to tap into God's strength and to find wisdom in, in God. And I think that a lot of times we settle for a temporary, inconsequential thing over the power of God. It, it's, for, for me, it's kind of like um, if, you, if you were invited to go have tea with the King of England... You know, and, and they're going to usher you in to Kensington Palace and set you down and bring out the Earl Grey tea on the nice silver tea set. And you say, no, 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 no. I'd rather go down to the little kids and drink uh, Im imaginary tea out of the plastic cup. So I want to encourage you to do something about it. Stop settling for crumbs in your life. Turn your dark calloused, insensitive heart back to the king of the universe. He will, he will open his arms and receive you. He will not deny you. He can't deny you. That's, that's outside of his character. He can't deny you. But when you do turn back to him and you say, I want to know you more, he says, let's do this. Let's get to know one another. I'll, I'll, I'll fully expose myself to you. I'll reveal myself to you. That will make all the difference in your life. I promise. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful picture that we have of your word of 
those who have walked with you and, and, and those that have experienced great blessing because of it. And Lord, my heart breaks for Christians that are in the room this morning that are willing to settle uh, for a half-charged battery. And, and then they walk around in defeat and they walk around with anxiety or worry because they haven't fully committed to knowing you more and learning to trust you and then having all of those benefits flow out of that. And Lord, this morning I want to lift up to you those that are here this morning that are dealing with any kind of personal issue or any struggle. Uh, Father, for those who have questions about direction in their life or Lord, for those that are dealing with bad news or uh, calamity. Lord, for every life situation, you are sufficient to provide for it. But you only can do that if we truly know you, if we're truly walking with you. And so, Lord, I pray this morning that all of us would, would sense the, the motivation and the impetus to draw close to you to set aside temporary, insignificant things and pursue you and your Son to a deeper level. For it's in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen.